Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Wellness Blueprints. I'm Jess. So glad that you are here to nourish your roots with me. Today, I want to talk a little bit about sweat. It is a wonderful way to detox, and I just want to give you some more information on that. I mean, um, I know it's uh, currently summertime uh, in a lot of the world. So a, a lot of you are sweating uh, just because like there's no other choice. Really, I mean, sweat pulls us down during times of stress. And when your body's overheated, it is that that creates stress. So you're, you know, you're cooling yourself down and you're and you're regulating your nervous system or, you know, attempting to by sweating. But uh it, this is sometimes overlooked as a method of detoxification, uh, just because uh, you know, there's just there's other ways that we look at for detox fine. You know, we want to make sure that you're pooping and you know those kinds of things. So, but uh, there are a lot of toxins prevalent in our world. You know, I mean, it's, you you can't avoid it. So don't you know like don't drive yourself nuts trying. Basically, I mean, you're not going to be able to avoid it all. So you know, just know that your body's going to be able to handle getting rid of it, especially if you have you know tools like this under your belt. So, you know, great ways that you can go ahead and get all of that stuff detoxed from you. Okay. And you can like work this kind of stuff into your everyday life. Uh, and maybe you're doing it already and you just have no idea like how good that actually was for you. So that could be a thing too. Okay. So toxins are prevalent. We've got heavy metals, you know, it's in our water, it's in our food, it's in your dental fillings, um, really all over the place. Uh, then we've got things, you know, plastics, uh, the chemical fragrances, uh, these things, you know, BPAs, those are found like in clear plastics, um, those receipts that you get from like the grocery store and, you know, like, oh, they're, yeah, those, those receipts are pretty toxic. I'm always like saving them so that I can, uh, you know, upload them to Fetch or to Ibotta to, you know, get points and like get gift cards and like cash back and stuff like that. And I try not to like hold them in my hand for too long. So, um, cause you know, that's just what they're made out of. Uh, and it is what it is, but you know, like don't take that and like, you know, play with it and whatever. Okay. Um, but you're also going to find your BPAs, you know, in your electronics and even in eyeglasses. And these are, they, they've got estrogenic properties. So they're basically, they're hormone disruptor, disruptors. They're going to mess with your hormones. So they can definitely lead to things like, and I've been here for this for um, obesity and um, sexual dysfunction, uh, pregnancy loss, and um, early puberty. These, you know, because it's, it's messing with your hormones. So your hormones are like, you know, doing wacky things uh, that they wouldn't normally do yet. So um, these things are all found, like, you know, scientifically, they are finding these in your blood, in your sweat, and in your urine. So uh, it's been very interesting, though, because uh, let's see, things like arsenic, uh, the concentration of arsenic in your sweat is 10 times more than that of in your blood. Uh, cadmium, it's 25 times more. You've got lead up to 300 times more. I know that lead is a thing that like lots of moms are out there like super concerned. You know, is there lead in my kids' plastic toys? This and that, you know, maybe you live in an old house. You're like, oh my gosh, is there lead paint in here? It's been a thing, you know, because lead can cause some damage and it's more up to, up to 300 times more concentrated in your sweat than it is in your blood. So sweating is going to be a great way to try and get rid of that. And mercury has a higher concentration in your sweat than in your blood as well. Okay. So, uh, you know, I mean, in general, we do want to lower our toxic loads uh, to prevent some of this. But like I said, you're not going to be able to avoid it all. Okay. So, you know, sweating is going to be a great thing. Um, now, your skin has a microbiome you know, I, it, it just does. It's, you know, we're, we're made up of all kinds of little germies and stuff, you know, little critters and everything. And they're supposed to be there. It's okay. Um, but we have this microbiome that needs to be properly balanced and sweat acts like a prebiotic for your skin. So it really promotes healthy skin. It's really awesome for skincare because it boosts like your cell turnover and it helps to get rid of pathogens like bacteria. So it's like really awesome for acne. So if you are sweating properly and cleaning that off, you know, it's, that's really, really great for that. It's going to boost your circulation. So it's great for cardiovascular health. Uh, so that, you know, and that kind of like goes right in there with um when you're doing like a workout or something because that's a workout for your heart too uh and then uh like we, were, we already talked a little bit about hormones so it's going to be good for for your sex drive so if that you know it, maybe sweating a little bit more often will help you get your sex drive back up uh it's good for menopause symptoms so stuff like that as well
So uh, this, you know, it isn't new. Uh, people have been uh, using sweat as a, as you know, a health thing, as a thing for detox for a very long time, you know, as, cause you know, that it cools us. I think they probably realized that they were feeling better after they would do that. Um, but, you know, they had Roman baths, they had um, aborigin aboriginal sweat lodges, there were Scandinavian saunas and um, Turkish baths, like these things, I don't know if you've heard, you know, some of these, when I was looking into it, uh, um, the aboriginal uh, sweat, lo sweat lodges, I don't think I had heard of before. But, you know, the point is, you know, lots of different cultures all over the world have been doing this for quite some time. Uh, in the clinic that I worked in in New Jersey, we of course had an infrared sauna. I still like that is on my wish list to get something in my house for an infrared sauna because that is fantastic. Uh, infrared sauna is a wonderful way to um, promote sweating and detox. And we would have people do that, you know. Uh, so infrared saunas are cooler than a regular sauna. So you don't get like quite so hot, but the infrared uh, lights, they actually penetrate the skin a little bit deeper so they can promote the sweating, that that detoxification, that sweating at a lower temperature. So you're not like in there, you know, like some of the saunas, like in the spas and stuff, I've been in those. Those are great. I mean, I enjoy those very much, but they can, uh, they can be a little intense, right? So the infrared sauna is much better for like an everyday kind of a thing. I'm sure you've seen practitioners out there that like get their butts in their sauna every morning after their workout or whatever, you know, they're, they're getting in there and sweating things out. So um, that's an excellent way. Uh, I, I definitely love that. Uh, another favorite of mine is a hot bath. So um, I have um, a colleague who uh, she promotes, um, oh, what is it? It's a uh, kill bind sweat. So the last part of it is sweating. And, you know, you can do that in a bath. So, you know, it's like you're, you're taking something to help kill off pathogens and then you take something to bind them and then you get in the bath or into the sauna or whatever and you sweat that shit out. <laughs> okay, like sweat it out. Uh, so a nice hot bath can really do it. Now, I love to take baths. I didn't always. So it's like relatively new. Uh, but, you know, something about like when you're really chilly, I love to get in there and just uh, cool off, uh, cool off, thaw out. <laughs> I'm already cool. Um, I like to thaw out in there, especially in the wintertime. That's really fantastic. Um, I always put some bath salts in there. Uh, so I get mine from Mystical Blossoms, but uh, you can make them at home too. Or there's there's lots of people who sell amazing bath salts. Just make sure that there's not like chemical fragrances and stuff in there because that's we, we don't want to add to our toxic load while we are trying to subtract from our toxic load. So just make sure that you're using good stuff, you know, some essential oils and um, things like that. And um, you get in there, you know, but those those bath salts have magnesium in there, so they can be very calming for you. You can put on some calming music. Uh, you can do some meditation. Uh, really, I mean, you know, whatever you want to do, light some candles around it. It doesn't, whatever, whatever makes you happy. Read a magazine, read a book. Uh, it does, everybody's a little bit different. I've seen people like sit down and like have, they got their chips and salsa, a little book there. Like they're just going to sit there and they're going to have themselves a little snacky s'more in the bath. Have at it. I love it. Uh, but the idea is that when <clears throat> when you're in there, even while you're sitting there in the water, you are starting to sweat. So you get, you know, you'll start to notice yourself like, wow, I'm feeling warm. So you wet, you start to wet yourself and, you know, you're just coming up out of the water a little bit because you want to cool down a little bit more. And that's promoting sweat. So you're really getting rid of a lot of toxins when you do that. Plus water can be so um, healing. Uh, so many, as a lot of people do really well in water. Um, as far as getting ideas, finding clarity with this, that, and the other thing. And, you know, we're always, uh, we should, I am, we're always uh, looking to detoxify physical things, but also detoxify things from our spirit body. So things like emotions and traumatic experiences and stuff, which we all have, even if you have like the, the most fantastic childhood ever, uh, because my, my, my childhood wasn't bad. You know, I'd, uh, it, I mean, there were things, you know, everybody has things, but even if you have a wonderful, like relatively happy childhood, you know, you didn't have to want for things and that kind of thing. Everybody has trauma because trauma is a, is a matter of perception. Okay. So one person's trauma, somebody else will go, how dare you think that's trauma? My trauma is better. No, everybody has something and everybody's trauma is valid. So anyway, I digress, but um, we want to work through those things as well. Right. We want we want to be detoxifying those things as well. So uh, the bath is really great for that. 
Um, the other thing that's like freaking awesome for that is a workout. Uh, you've probably heard the phrase, uh, you know, the saying, like you're just one workout from a good mood. And that's true. Um, it, you know, Working out releases endorphins. Um, you know, most of us know that. We probably <laughs> learned it from Legally Blonde, if nowhere else. But uh, and she was absolutely right when um, when uh, L uh, Reese Witherspoon said that in that movie. She, she's right. Uh, when you release endorphins, you're happy. It's happy chemicals. Uh, so it also helps us to work through, you know, anger and frustration and this and that. You know, just this morning, you know, I mean, I got up, I did my thing, I had my. Uh, I did my meditation and my journaling. I journaled a little bit first and I did a little meditation, journaled a little bit more, you know, um, and then like my, my son was having a, was having a rough moment. So I brought him in and, you know, we talked about that and calmed everything down, you know, and then, and, and then, you know, I got frustrated with one of my other kids. I mean, I've got four kids, so, you know, it's not going to be all flowers and sunshine and freaking lollipops all the time. You know, I mean, I'm like, this is real mom in over here. So, you know, you're going to get into nasty mood. But um, so my daughter and I <clears throat> were having a little, we had a little uh, spat, which, you know, it happens. I mean, she's 11 and a half. And, you know, it's like arguing with a, you know, smaller version of myself. It's super fun. And she has a twin sister. So they're kind of like both halves of my personality at that age. So it's great. We get to choose like which younger Jess I get to, <laughs> I get to argue with that day. <clears throat> but anyway, um. I'm always trying to help my kids do similar things to what I'm doing because I was well into my thirties before I learned any of these um, different things that we can do to try and better ourselves and calm our nervous system. Because it's not really, it's not just about being woo woo -y and like, Oh, I'm going to meditate and it's going to look all Zen like and everything. No, it's because this is a good way to regulate your nervous system and you need to detoxify yourself of, of like all of these things to do that. So, uh my daughter and I uh decided to do uh my workout together. And of course, you know, she used really little weights and she, you know, she did whatever she could, but she I mean, she made it through. Like she did she did good. Like she did really well. Um but you know, you work through anger and frustration and you know, it just it really it, it releases all of those endorphins and everything and it's activating your parasympathetic nervous system, which is what we need. You know, you've got your sympathetic and you've got your parasympathetic. You know, your sympathetic is like that gas pedal, uh, that's that fight or flight, uh, which fight, flight, um, uh, freeze or fawn. You know, you've got all of those actually there in the sympathetic. And that's where most of us spend most of our time. We're like stressed out all the time. Uh, and we need to activate that parasympathetic because that's how we detox. That's how we regulate our nervous system. That's how we find our calm. When your parasympathetic is not activated and you're in sympathetic, oh my gosh, like you're, you're like your your digestive system will shut down. And be like you're not going to poop. You're not going to poop properly or like that. You know, it's going to be like a whole big thing. And that's because, you know, if you were run if you were running from like a saber tooth tiger, do you want to have to stop and relieve yourself? No. So all that shuts down. All that shit shuts down. So uh, it also shuts down uh, the regulation of your uh, of your nervous system. So when you get out there, you know, we got out there, we started to sweat, we started to do this workout. Where you know releasing things, you know, I mean, so, I mean, oh my gosh, have you ever attended a booty yoga class? You want to let let some steam loose. Let me tell you, and I had the most fantastic booty yoga instructor, and she's a friend of mine. She's freaking amazing. But some of the ways we would scream stuff out in there, hey man, let it out because it's better out than in, right? Uh, but you're also sweating, <clears throat> and that is regulating your entire nervous system with that workout. And it's relieving your anxiety. It's relieving your frustration. It relieves all of those things. And at the same time is releasing those happy chemicals. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's definitely a great one. Not everybody is going to do, you know, a crazy big workout, you know, but you can still absolutely break a really awesome sweat doing some yoga, doing some Pilates, even just going for a walk on a nice day. Try to walk a little bit more briskly, uh, going for a hike or something. It doesn't have to be a difficult hike. You don't have to be, you know, like, oh, let me go climb Mount Everest. No, Jess is not telling you to do that. Um, but Getting out there and, you know, being in nature, let the skin, let, let the skin, let the sun touch your skin, allow yourself to start to sweat. Okay. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, so maybe like you're outside gardening or something like that, you know, that can be really, like, that can be really strenuous. You know, you have to hold yourself in certain positions so that your back's not killing you. You got, you know, I mean, like we, we got to go weed the gardens today and, uh, you know, cause it's like finally sunny outside and it's been like raining for the last couple of days. So of course the weeds are like, you know, six inches tall because <laughs> it rained so much, but all of these things are going to promote that sweat. So um, one of the other things that I want to make sure that I mention, okay, because you do need to sweat and you do need to reduce your toxic load. So uh, antiperspirant deodorants, I do not recommend. I actually full on recommend that if you have one, you go toss it in the trash right now. And there's a couple of reasons. Number one, because it's an antiperspirant, which means it's going to keep you from sweating. So I get it. You want to put that under your arms because you don't want the sweat things there and it's embarrassing. I understand. However, uh, you're supposed to sweat. OK, and we have a lot of lymph nodes in those areas. OK, right underneath in um in, in you know, like in our breast and underneath our um, underarms there. Lots and lots of lymph nodes under there. So your lymphatic system hangs on to a lot of toxins. So you want to sweat those things out. And so you are keeping those things locked in right there. So, you know, that's definitely a big contribution to why breast cancer is so prevalent. So not only that, but the main ingredient in the antiperspirant that keeps you from sweating is aluminum. So not only are you not allowing the toxins to come out, you're actually adding more toxins in with that. So um, uh, a, a more natural deodorant, and there's a lot of them out there. Uh, people are different with it. I mean, I don't I don't like sell one or anything. I think doTERRA, doTERRA does have one. Um, so if anybody wanted to hop onto my site and grab that, I think my mom uses that one. I use the Dr. Squatch, um, but there's um, Native, there's, I, there, there's a ton of them out there. So find one that's going to work well for you. Uh, and I mean, you know, if you, I'll, I'll, I'll try and come up with um, some ideas for that and I can, you know, make like a post about it or something like that on one of my socials. Uh, but yeah, we don't want to, we don't want to be adding in more toxins and then not at the same time, not allowing the toxins to come out. Like, it's just like, that's right out. That's like the opposite of what you want to do. So we want to activate that nervous system. Uh, so sweating daily is going to be a great thing. Some people sweat more than others. Okay. If you, um, like men tend to sweat, sweat more than women, and that's just because they have more muscle mass. So it, it takes more for their body to cool down. So they, you know, especially like somebody who works out uh, really often, you know, lifts a lot of weights, uh, you know, he's probably going to sweat a lot more uh, just because, you know, the muscle mass, got to cool yourself down. So it's just your body doing its work. Uh, people who are obese or uh, just rather overweight, they're going to sweat more as well, just because, you know, it's, you know, same, same idea. It's taking up more, um, uh, energy and everything to, to get all of the toxins out. If you are toxic, you know, if you like certain people, sometimes you have more toxins and pathogens, uh, you know, like uh, even like when you get a fever, you know, you're going to sweat that out. That's good. Let yourself sweat it out. Cause you're sweating out all of those toxins. Um, but yeah, so some people will sweat more than others. And of course, like there are conditions where it's like, oh my goodness, you're sweating way too much. Uh, but, you know, as long as there is a, a way that if you're supporting your body so that you can get rid of those toxins in other ways as well, then you probably won't have to sweat quite so much. And also if you decide to daily sweat intentionally. So if you're like, okay, I'm going to do my workout and I'm going to get super, super sweaty, you're going to get a bunch out then so that when you're out, you know, horseback riding or something else, you may not necessarily be dripping in sweat and looking ridiculous. Uh, so because you're allowing it to come out more intentionally sitting in the sauna, you're allowing it to come out more intentionally and you're doing it every day. So, uh, you know, the more that you do it, the better it's going to be, you know, letting all of those things out. So um, I do want to mention that if you have eczema, if you're like super prone to eczema, sometimes sweating can irritate that. So use caution with that just because of like the itchiness and everything of it. Um, so um, sometimes that can be an issue. And there are certain like heart conditions, high blood pressure and things like that, that um, sweating, you know, sweating too much can um, aggravate that as well. So I just got to mention those couple of things. Um, and then um, <laughs> stay hydrated. Okay. Especially you're going, you know, if you're, well, if you're doing a workout of some variety, you're exercising, you're probably going to have a bottle of water nearby. Good for you. Cause you should. And all of the videos, they always have water and they tell you to take a water break. There's a reason for that. So make sure you stay hydrated. 
Um, especially if you're going into the sauna, you want to hydrate before, hydrate after. They even tell you that before and after like a deep tissue massage, you know, because you're just getting into all of those things. So you have to stay hydrated in general. But especially if you're going to be outside gardening, you're outside playing, you're running around, you're playing sports outside, you're hiking, uh, gardening, whatever you're doing outside, make sure that you stay hydrated. And just plain water is not going to be enough. You do want to make sure that there are electrolytes in that, you know, um, so you can add like a pinch of sea salt and uh, a squeeze of citrus. That'll do it for you. Adding in some cucumbers, you know, you get like the little infusion thing and you put your cucumbers and maybe like a lemon slice or something in there and like a piece of mint. Um, and you can just like infuse your water with that. It's super refreshing. It tastes fabulous. And you have all of your electrolytes right in there and they're coming from food. Okay. You're, they're coming from salt and food. Um, I do also like, um, Modere has their revitalize, uh, minerals, uh, and, you know, for your water. And, um, uh, I also like element, you know, I, there's a couple of them out there. Oh my gosh. There's, there's a bunch of them out there. Keep an eye on the ingredients, make sure that it doesn't have like aspartame or something like that in there. Um, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to, cause again, adding to the toxic load, but, um, you know, stay hydrated. So um, you just want to make sure that you are adding some minerals to that. You know, we are supposed to get our minerals from food, uh, you know, but, um, you know, our bodies are what they are. It is what it is. Our food doesn't have quite as many nutrients as it used to necessarily. Um, so, you know, just do the best that you can with that. So, yeah. So get out there, sweat it out. It's an excellent, excellent way to get rid of toxins. And so if you didn't know that, now you do. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so glad that you did. Go ahead and leave me a five-star review, please. And please share with your friends and follow me on all of the socials. Love you guys. Have a beautiful day.